Awesome. Yeah. Welcome um, everyone to, to today's webinar. I'll just do a quick intro on our panelists and we will jump on in. So for those who don't know, my name is Jordan Buckner. I'm the founder of Food Bevy, an online community for food and beverage founders to help you grow from startup to scale. And today we're doing an awesome webinar with our partner Deliver about thriving in Shipageddon. So we're in the heart of Q4, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is just a week away. We want to make sure that you are well prepared to manage the coming onslaught in supply chain challenges, shipping challenges, to make sure we get your products into the hands of your customers and reduce all the customer complaints that happen during this time when they can't get what they want. So with that, I will let Nabil take it away. Hey everyone, uh, really happy to be here. Um, thank you, Jordan, for having us on board. Thank you to the Food Bevy team uh, for inviting us on to speak. And yeah, as Jordan mentioned, the topic of this webinar is thriving in Chippegadon. But before we go into that, just want to talk a little bit about myself and my colleague, Sandy Pura, who's on the line. Um, like Jordan mentioned, my name is Nabil. I lead marketing here at Deliver. Uh, I come from a biz ops and strategy background. So I used to work at a consulting firm called Oliver Wyman out of their New York office before joining um, Deliver and, and really excited and passionate about this space. And so I um, wanted to uh, be on this call and excited to share some of these, these thoughts with you. Um, just in terms of kind of our overall structure today, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about who we are at, at Deliver, um, you know, why we feel we can talk on, on this topic, and then we'll go into thriving in Shipageddon, and then after that, talking about fast fulfillment as actually a revenue driver and not just a cost sink for your, for your company. Uh, but just starting off on kind of like that Shipageddon topic, uh, it's funny, this is, this is a term that was actually coined by the Wall Street Journal, I believe. And as you guys have saw, you saw last year, it was an absolute nightmare going into the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period in terms of logistics. We saw, uh, you know, the coverage that any carrier had in any given area was dramatically reduced. We saw that shipping times increased significantly. We saw that a, a numerous amount of packages were lost and so on and so forth. So we really want to talk about how we can address that coming into this Black Friday, Cyber Monday period and on to the holidays. And what are some things you can do to prepare and get ahead of this trend? But just to quickly start off and, and let you know kind of who we are at Deliver, what we do, just so you have an idea of what our background and our expertise are. Um, you know, Deliver is a fast fulfillment company. And what we do is essentially offer fast, affordable one to two day delivery. Right now, you may have noticed like your consumers expect free next day delivery and everyone outside of Amazon can't really deliver that. And you know, our goal is to essentially enable you to cost effectively provide one to two day delivery. So just to start off, I think it'd be interesting to hear from everyone in attendance kind of what your uh, you know, current shipping speeds are on average. And so uh, here's a poll on, on, on the screen. We'd love to hear back from the team on kind of like, what do you currently offer? All right, so we have paid express shipping. A um, couple of folks doing, you know, free standard shipping seems to be the, the typical option that, that, that uh, folks are going with these days couple free express shipping options. Cool, you know, good, good to hear from the team on, on, on some of the options that you, that you take on. So our hypothesis at, at Deliver is essentially that customers expect more and more faster shipping. And we'll show that a little bit on in the presentation. And essentially, if you can offer and meet the expectations that your customers have for fast fulfillment without breaking the bank, you'll actually see an increase in profits, whereas the additional cost of offering fast fulfillment will be far offset by the amount of revenue that you'll make in by the additional revenue that you'll make by offering fast fulfillment. So we'll talk about a little bit in the presentation about, you know, what, are the, what is the sales month that you can see from offering one or two day delivery and then how much it can cost you and why there's actually a huge potential for profit here. Uh, but before we go into that and talk with, and, and get too salesy, like this, this presentation is very much focused on kind of providing you the insight that you need uh, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So I'll quickly go through these slides just to let you know where we're coming from. Uh, deliver, you know, we're the largest independent e-commerce fulfillment network, 80 warehouses, two cross docks, five sortation centers, and then we have 12 carriers that power fulfillment for us. And so this is a large distributed network, covers the entire country and allows you to offer one to two day delivery uh, for your products across the nation. Uh, how it basically works, like I mentioned, your inventory goes into our network, we'll distribute it through our 
uh, cross dock facility. So our forwarding facility goes into a, a numerous set of warehouses. We'll distribute your inventory across the country, and then we'll fulfill it to your, your end customer through you know various <clears throat> uh, uh, carriers who will give you the cheapest rate. Make sure that you get affordable one to two day delivery. Um, a couple of reasons why merchants trust us because of the fact the fact that if you sell more, you can sell more if you offer next day and two day delivery, which we'll talk a little bit about, about later. You know, we're very competitive in terms of pricing. It's very simple to set up with us because all you have to do is essentially log on, sign up, connect your channel, whether it be Shopify, Walmart, or Amazon, wherever you sell, you can automatically make that connection online and then start fulfilling your orders right away. Um, we also provide kind of real time reporting and visibility on your business. We talked about this, you know, pricing is very transparent. It's on a per skew basis. And so you know exactly what you're gonna pay from day one. Uh, and you know, if you're if you're interested, if you just want to learn about fulfillment in general or understand what fulfillment options you have, not just deliver whatever 3PL, your own warehouses, um, you know, feel free to contact us at advice at deliver.com. Really just there to be a resource to help you out with planning Black Friday, planning the holiday period, anything above that. We're 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 there to help. And if you are interested in deliver itself, feel free to reach out to Sandeep. His phone number and email is his here. Feel free to reach out and he'll be help, happy to give you some personal onboarding experience. That being said, you know, talking about Chipageddon, how do you thrive during this period? You know, it's a period of uncertainty. There's a lot going on in terms of carrier and 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 logistic networks, and and you know, it, it can be a nightmare. So let's think about how how do we navigate that. Um, you know, peak is fast approaching it's next week. Uh, we've been planning for this for months now. Uh, there is a lot kind of riding on this period and we understand how important it is for, for merchants like yourself. So you need to be ready to prepare for 3.5 times your regular sales during this period. And what does that mean? How do you ensure that your holiday season in 2021 is going to be smooth? Some of this is going to be very kind of familiar to, to the folks on the calls. For others, it'll be a little bit less familiar. So we'll, we'll talk about this at a high level, but I do wanna share that Deliver, we've put together a holiday planning guide that has, it's essentially a spreadsheet that breaks down all of the different planning items that you need to have. And you can input your actual kind of data for your orders, your labor input and so on and so forth. And it can help you plan out your warehouse network or your logistics capacity during this period. But I'll, I'll share that a little bit later. But overall to prepare, you need to understand your Q4 volume forecasts. You need to have that broken down by week. And then you need to understand what your volumes are gonna be during the cyber five days, which is very important. How do you capitalize on those periods? And then from there, it's really important for you to have a SKU level forecast and understand for your best selling SKUs how, what is the, the velocity of that SKU, understanding the placement of that SKU, what ads you're gonna be running to promote that SKU. So this is all you know, pretty, pretty familiar stuff for, for most of you. Having an outbounding forecast and an inbounding forecast, uh, you know, it sounds pretty, pretty simple, but this is something that can be missed sometimes. It's like understanding the, the capacity that you have to actually get your products out in any given region and understanding how quickly can you get your, your products into your network so that you're ready for the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period. And what we typically advise is that you start getting your inbounds prepared 12 to 16 weeks before this period. So now we're, we're kind of past this, but this is a learning for, for next time around. And then it's really important to understand labor planning in the same way through an inbound and outbound flow. So understanding from your weekly inbound forecast, how many units can you inbound in a given, in any given hour? What total labor supply do you need for inbounding? And then adding a 20% buffer, that's what we, we typically recommend. And then you'll see a similar formula for, for the outbound side of things. So quite a few kind of inputs that go into Black Friday, Cyber Monday planning. And then finally, kind of like systems planning. So how do you actually understand from your, your tech systems how much you can actually outbound? How much can you actually sell in a given period? So understanding max orders per minute, max inventory updates per minute, and adding a 50% buffer on that is what we, what we plan. And that's like the stress test that you should put in place for your, for your systems before Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And Bill, one thing that's interesting that I find is going into this season, a lot of the brands on here are like in like years one through 
four, let's call it. And they're finding that their like forecasts are all over the place because they're during a time of like pretty accelerated growth and trying to forecast exactly like how much product they will sell and not trying to like overcommit or undercommit is like really challenging, especially as it comes to like not just getting their product, but then planning like how those are going to go through like the fulfillment and logistics systems. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think the, the funny part is, you know, forecasts are going to be accurate and inaccurate. Like forecasts are going to be generally pretty inaccurate and you're, and you're only going to have a directional answer. But the exercise of actually sitting down within your company and doing the planning around this will give you, will put you in a much better situation than having disorganized or disjointed forecasts. Like the actual act of sitting down and consolidating whatever kind of sources you have on the inbound, outbound side, your labor side, your system side, having that discussion actually puts you in a better position. And I would wager that even if you're off and by you know, 10%, 20%, 30%, that exercise is going to be a help, helpful one for your business. And as you iterate and go through more holiday seasons, I can't promise you'll get more accurate, but what you will do is build kind of an intuition or reflexiveness on how you can plan for the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period. Awesome, yeah. And one thing I see too for a lot of natural channel brands is that the kind of sales cycle starts at Black Friday, but it actually extends even past the holiday into January because a lot of brands take advantage of the, um, you know, new year, new you kind of movement as well. So you almost have like a three month selling season. So it might be okay to like over plan early if you don't hit those early metrics because you have enough time to kind of sell through that inventory later, but you never want to be short, right? <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely right. And I think that like once you get your, once you create your inbound plan and you've inbound your, your inventory into whatever your network is or got it set up, it's very hard to be flexible within the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period. So let's say that you're off by, or you, you, you haven't um, inbounded enough inventory, it is going to be nearly impossible for you to send more in because of how much carrier ingestion, carrier um, basically uh, busyness that we're gonna see during this period. Like they just won't be able to ingest your inventory. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Just, just pushing around and, and, and thanks for the question. I definitely keep them coming. So now it's, it's basically game time. We're already in this. Um, there, are, there are three kind of main factors that you can control during this time that can help you plan from a logistics aspect, your, your fulfillment. So sales timing and amount. So <clears throat> during this time, you know, forecasting and understanding your Cyber Monday sales, five days before Cyber Monday sales, like what are, what are the kind of volumes that you're seeing? And could you turn those off before Cyber Monday in case you're running through your inventory too quickly? Those are the kind of things that you can do from an advertising perspective. Obviously you can scale up and down your advertising spend so that you're not burning through inventory or that you're efficiently turning over your inventory. Uh, and then product placements. So either through email and website, what are you actually getting out through your through your channels and what, what are you doing for promotion? That will affect obviously the, the turnaround of your, your inventory. But the one thing that you can control for, and this is something we talked about, is the actual shipping aspect of things. And, and what does that mean? So let's just take a, take a look at this graph of uh, delivery performance for USPS priority uh, before you know, that holiday period. And so as you're seeing the breakdown, there's, there's quite a bit of one-day coverage in this area. Then across the country, there is quite a lot of fast fulfillment coverage. This is what it looks like during peak. Basically, you're seeing across the nation, there is not a lot of flexibility at all. So that's why planning is so important before this period. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't help you. And talking about the different models of how do you kind of build resiliency into your warehouse network, no matter how you fulfill, um, whether that's through a 3PL, yourself, whatever option that you choose, there are risks, there's pros and cons to whatever option that you pick. So if you warehouse everything in Los Angeles and you have an order in Chicago, uh, you might have, it, it might be very efficient and cost effective for you to store all your inventory in one location. That might be where you're ingesting the inventory from overseas or even manufacturing it. Getting it to Chicago during this period, there's a lot of potential for fa failure. So the further that you're pushing your inventory, there could be potential failures and delays. Um, inventory moves between locations or moves between uh, different facilities as it goes across the country. That's an area for it to be missed or 
or slowed down, or there could be weather issues in all of those areas. There's a lot of things that can happen uh, in, in the, uh, the holiday period. So what we found is essentially, if you can't offer fast fulfillment or fast shipping within the holiday period, especially like before December, you're gonna lose out on 12 days of sales. And what that means is essentially, because your obviously your, your customers want to get their products before the holiday period, you actually can't get the product uh, fulfilled to them before when they need it. And so they won't, they won't buy. And so we found that basically 12 days out from, from Christmas on average, you, your, your customers, if they don't place that order, they won't get the product in time and therefore they're, they're not going to buy in the first place. So you're losing out on 12 days of sales if you have a slow and inefficient network. And what that means in terms of the, your sales for the entire year, that actually equates to one month of lost sales if you look at it on uh, one, like if you look at a regular season, those 12 days during the holidays are equivalent to 30 days of sales in any other part of the year. So the way that you manage this issue, you know, we talked about that California to, to Chicago problem and how slow fulfillment will essentially lead you to lose out on sales. The way to do that, to, to mitigate that issue is localizing, localizing inventory where you have demand. So placing products closer to where the demand is. And so before Black Friday, if you can kind of predict where your demand is going to be across the country and then allocate your inventory in each of those regions, you'll actually be able to reduce the number of miles that your package travels for any given order, localize your inventory, get the product to your customers faster and not miss out on those sales. And so here's the example. If you have inventory, obviously, in the outskirts of Chicago and you're fulfilling to metropolitan downtown, Toronto, uh, downtown Chicago, you can, you'll run into a lot less issues because there's a lot fewer miles that that package has to travel to get there. So pretty self-explanatory. If you set up your network in this way with, with closer proximity of inventory to orders or to demand, you can capitalize on, on an extended holiday season for your to, to, to generate sales. Nabil, a question um, that kind of came up in the chat. What do you think about Amazon Prime or FBA as a way of localizing inventory in different markets? Or are we expecting them to also have major delays over the holidays? So in general, we have seen delays from Amazon during this period. You'll also see surcha or surcharge pricing that goes into effect during the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period. So that's definitely true. In general, obviously, like we, we recommend like uh, Amazon as as like a, you know, using their service to, to fulfill across the country. But what we found is that a lot of their network runs into issues as well. So having a backup service in place that can fulfill when Amazon has either inbound or outbound restrictions in their network is really important. So some of our largest uh, accounts at, at Deliver will have backup inventory always available within Deliver. And another thing that we do is essentially um, on, on Deliver or other warehouse networks, they don't have limitations on the products that you can get into their network. So when you're planning before the Black Friday, Cyber Monday period, Amazon might actually restrict the amount of any given SKU that you have going into their network versus like other options like Deliver will not. So that's a way to kind of get ahead of that trend. Yeah, that's one thing just to add, like I work with a lot of brands doing um, Amazon and do it myself. And I'm dealing with one right now that had like hundreds of units that one like weren't scanned properly by uh, UPS going into the warehouse. And so they're essentially like stuck in this limbo and getting inbound into Amazon at this time is just like horrible. I tell people like send multiple shipments because some of them will get lost or will get delayed and they can take two to three weeks to get into inventory. I'm dealing with this problem now, just like inventory not in stock during one of the primary like selling periods and Amazon being like no help in getting those in. So they've been like pretty good at staying on top of um, their outbound logistics and getting to their customers because Amazon essentially is like a customer first company and at the expense of the small businesses that sell on there. Um, and so that's only the thing. So if you're using Amazon FBA around the holiday period, I would definitely get all your inventory, as much inventory as you can in, in like September even, because once October hits, their warehouses are just packed and things like get lost in the system.
Yeah, that's a very fair point. Like on the outbound side of things, they're they're very good at getting their packages out to their customers. Um, you know, sometimes that can that can run into issues, but on the most most of the times, the controls into the network are on the inbound side. And so, what we've noticed is that oftentimes merchants will be restricted or won't reach certain thresholds. So they won't they won't reach certain performance thresholds or turnover for their inventory. So their slow removing SKUs will not be ingested into the network and so on and so forth. And they get more restrictive into the Black Friday period. Right, so we, we talked about basically how localization is the solution to achieving on-time delivery. And so this just shows what the what the, the deliver warehouse map looks like across the country, but you want to emulate that as much as possible if you're not using deliver um, or another kind of like 3PL service is to obviously move your inventory closer to your demand. Um, and then what's great is that Amazon has basically pioneered reducing the number of miles that a package has to travel to get to its customer from where it's stored. So the more you can do that, and the more efficiently you can do that, you can move into kind of next day coverage. So the less miles that something travels, the less it actually costs to get it there, and it gets to your, gets to your customer sooner. So it's a win-win for both you because it costs less, and it's a win for the customer because they want the product there quicker. They'd want it today, not tomorrow. They want it this hour, not next hour. So long story short, as you kind of build out this capability, you can get to offering next day delivery and that allows you to see an increase in sales, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the presentation. So now with a more localized network, um, with deliver or another service, you can essentially unlock nine more days of sales and you can sell up until December 21st because uh, with, a localized with a localized inventory network, you're essentially having inventory closer to demand. Uh, quick, quick plug for us. Uh, we recently launched uh, a new service where now 118 million Americans by the, this is long past since October 31st, have been able to get next day fulfillment with our network. Um, so for major metros across the US, now we offer next day. And so, uh, you know, we're a viable solution in helping you extend your your holiday sales. And we talked about how, how, how you can do that yourself as well. Um, so basically thriving in Shipageddon, what are the key learnings? Forecast, forecast and forecast. Build the exercise of forecasting, build the exercise of being disciplined prior to this holiday period. Promote, obviously this is something that's second nature now to, to most of you, which is, you know, have efficient sales, ads, product placements, and then localizing inventory. Uh, either yourself through 3PL, whatever way that you do your fulfillment, localization is the way to unlock more sales and unlock nine more days of holiday sales on average. Um, so that's kind of like the first part. Uh, feel free, Jordan, if you have any questions on, on that piece. If not, we can, we can push forward on how faster fulfillment can actually be a growth driver. Um, basically, what we find is that sometimes the way that that merchants think about fulfillment, it's kind of like a cost center. It's something that you need to accomplish. It's something that you need to basically have completed. But what we want to kind of share is how fulfillment and how the faster you can fulfill can actually be a big revenue and profit driver for, for, uh, for your company. But any questions there, Jordan, or should I just kind of push ahead? Yeah, let's keep on going. Awesome. So What's what's funny is that across many verticals, two-day delivery is actually quite slow, and e-commerce is increasingly moving towards the next day. So I've kind of talked about this throughout the entire presentation, but let me let me put some numbers behind it. So this is actually a study that was done by McKinsey, uh, I believe, earlier in the year, and essentially it talks about the fact that 90% 90 90 of consumers now see two- and three-day delivery as a baseline. So it's their baseline expectation. The other thing is that 30% of consumers actually expect same day delivery. Now, this is a bit skewed because of, you know, Instacart and other grocery providers, but in, in, in general, um, this trend is absolutely clear that it's not a luxury anymore to have prime like fulfillment, two day fulfillment. It's something that your customers expect. And another kind of like study that, that shows this, that 40%, consumers expect 40% faster shipping than they did in 2012. So not only do they expect fast delivery, 
there's a there's a trend now that clearly uh, consumers are expecting faster and faster delivery as time goes on. Nabil, one thing I might get into this are consumers willing to pay for that or are they expecting it to be free? I see in here like we accept free shipping, but they expect yeah. it to be free. That's a really that's a really good point. So they expect it to be free, and I'll talk about that in a second. So basically, they expect free and fast delivery, but but no one wants to pay for it. Like you don't want to pay for fast delivery. They don't want to pay for it. So who pays for it? And essentially, I'll talk about that in a second, but there's a way to make it pay for itself if you do it right. Um, and so I just want to talk about like what, what the experience can look like if you do offer fast delivery really quickly. So on the left-hand side, when you offer fast delivery, this is our own internal data and we can, we can share results as well, which is we can, we can share vetting of these results if you, if you send us a message. But essentially, we'll see a 44% increase in sales from two-day delivery or 75 increase in sales from next day delivery. And obviously this will differ across, you know, different types of products. It will differ across different channels. So on Walmart versus Shopify, there'll be a difference, but this is what we see on average on our, for our Shopify clients. On the other hand, 24% of consumers will abandon a cart because of slow delivery speeds, if you offer slow delivery. So there's clear benefits to offering fast delivery. There's clear, uh, you know, concerns if you don't offer fast delivery. But the fundamental problem, which is what Jordan talked about, is consumers fa demand fast delivery, but no one wants to pay for it. Obviously, like you don't want to hurt your margins. They don't want to pay more to add to the cost of whatever product they're shipping. So the way to kind of seize this opportunity is to make fast fulfillment pay for itself. And if I had to summarize the next, the present, next bit of this presentation, it's essentially if you offer fast delivery and you do it correctly, with the right techniques that we'll talk about, the increase in revenue that you'll have will offset, more than offset, the cost of the additional, the additional cost of fast delivery. Therefore, you will end up with a profit by offering fast delivery. You'll, you'll give a better experience to your customers. They'll return more, they'll buy more, they'll have higher LTV, and so on. So, you know, just framing this in like the pillars of how do you grow your, your D2C business anyways, you can increase conversion, drive up average order value, drive up customer LTV, bring down acquisition costs. We all know this, but how does kind of fast delivery fit into this framework? So here are some things apart from fast delivery that you can do. I, I won't go into this because this is you know common nature or common understanding for all of you. But the the items that I want to talk about is for increased conversion, we can turn we can talk about fast tags. And we'll talk about what that is in a second, but essentially fast delivery badging on your website. For average order value, I'll talk about some interesting case studies where if you put a minimum cost to obtain fast shipping, so like a $40 minimum and you get two-day shipping for that, that will increase your average order value. And we have a couple of case studies around that. You can drive up customer LTV through fast tags. So basically, if you retarget your existing customer base through emails and you essentially mention that you'll get the product to them quicker, we've, we've seen that actually drive up LTV. And they can help you bring down acquisition costs because if you add fast delivery promises to your ads, that actually brings down your CAC. Um, and, and, and that's another way that you can help drive business results for your, for your company with fast delivery. So just to kind of dive into each of those, each of those areas and, and some of the strategies that you can use. And these are with deliver or without deliver. These are just things that you can keep in mind and it is possible to implement these without deliver. Um, but obviously we have solutions for this as well. So first thing is make fast delivery a conversion driver and double your, double your site conversion. So here's an example of a, of a, a customer of ours, uh, Variant. Uh, Variant sells, you know, all these kind of like self, uh, they, they sell kind of like, um, how do I describe it? Like self-improvement items, things of that nature. And we basically saw that when they added two-day delivery badging, which is what you see here next to their products, they saw you know, a phenomenal increase in website sessions. Uh, they 2X their conversion rate and they had a 715% increase in Twitter referrals. And this is just from kind of adding fast delivery badging to their website. And so talking you about- You know like why some of their uh, like Twitter referrals came in or something? Were they doing something on like the marketing side to like really promote that? Yeah, I think it was kind of like a network effect where one, having faster delivery allowed them to basically see more customers come in. 
And because some of their products are, are ones that you actually have recurring purchases of, they saw customers coming back because of fast delivery and because the products is something that they could get very quickly. And I think that had a bit of a network effect and then they obviously marketed it as well through Twitter. So just talking about some of the stats that they were able to see um, before and after fast tags. So fast tags is like the deliver jargon for the badging that you put next to your products. So Amazon Prime kind of pioneered this, which is on their product, you see the Amazon Prime badge. If you create your own version of it, and we call it the fast tag and put free two-day delivery next to your products. This, this is what you can see in terms of conversion. So they saw a 75% increase, 75 increase in add to cart rates, 94% increase in the number of customers that reach checkout, uh, and 100% increase, close to 100% increase of the number of customers that actually converted. So pretty phenomenal results just from adding two-day delivery badges. We you know, encourage you to test this out um, our platform, if you sign up with Deliver and say you have like a Shopify store, if you connect your Shopify store with Deliver, send us inventory into our network, we'll automatically distribute it across the country and then automatically tag your products with fast badges. If the customer, based on their location, is close to your inventory, they'll automatically get that, that badging. So we do recommend you just give it a try. If you have a way of emulating that yourself, give it a try and then measure what the uplift is before and after. We're actually working on internal tools that deliver it that uh, with, our, with our data science team for any given merchant soon, we'll be able to kind of predict what your impact will be from fast delivery badging. So we'll definitely be sharing that as we, as we build that tool out, but we encourage you to kind of try this out yourself. The other thing is uh, talking about fast delivery on as an AOV driver. And really just quickly wanted to talk about this case study with Ani Energy. So pretty cool brand that, that, that uses Deliver. They're basically a healthy uh, energy drink company uh, founded by uh, you know, a famous TikTok influencer. His name is Josh Richards. And essentially what they did was they basically said, hey, okay, so offering two-day delivery on all of our products, the unit economics just don't make sense. Like we're, we, it's going to cost too much. We're, we're going to lose on our products. So what we'd like to see is essentially a minimum threshold where a, a customer has to purchase $40 worth of products before we give them free two-day delivery. And then we'll see what the impact is on our business. And essentially it ended up being a big win because when they implemented this, this, this is what kind of like the, the website UI looks like. And with Deliver, we actually automatically just tag your product with, with your cart minimum. You can set up the cart minimum on our product and it'll automatically show up on your Shopify website. But really cool results, 12% increase in average order value, 12% increase in average units per order, a five to 10 increase, 10 increase in profit margins per order, with fast delivery. And now 33% of their products are shipped through fast delivery versus beforehand, they didn't have any products that were being shipped through fast delivery. So pretty cool results just from a simple, you know, a simple UI change, a simple logic change. Um, and yeah, we talked about on average across our customers, we're seeing a 50%, 15% increase in multi-unit orders. So customers add more to their, their cart because they wanna get fast delivery. Uh, and a 15% increase in average order of value. So pretty powerful stuff. Hey Nabil, a quick question that came in. So how do you handle faster delivery messaging for companies with a broad category? Um, or you mentioned that you know, they, have, they could place some of their best sellers in more distribution centers for fast delivery, but not the whole catalog. So they basically wanna enable certain SKUs on fast delivery and not others. Right, or if they're, you know, if they're based in one market, but they can't just, it, it's they don't have enough kind of volume per those specialty SKUs to have them distribute it widely. Um, you know, can you tag some items and not others based on like where the customer is? Can you tag some items based on others depending on what the customer is? So just if I understand the question correctly, basically you have a SKU, it does really well in a specific locale, but doesn't have enough volume, I guess, across the country to warrant right. fast delivery. Is that correct? Yeah. So you can enable that. Like essentially you would, through, I, I, I'm guessing like, is this through deliver or through yourself? Like if you have it yourself, I'd You're thinking through deliver. Got it. Sandeep, do you want, do you want to chime in and basically, uh, you know, uh, take a stab at that question? So are you trying to, I'm just trying to understand your question correctly. Is it like the fast tags that I'm Sandeep, by the way, at deliver, and I'm just going to compliment Nabil's presentation here. So nice to meet everyone. Um, is it the fast tag on all of these individual listings? I'm just trying to understand your qu question a little bit clearer. 
So he was basically just saying there's a broad catalog and they don't have the volume to like have their products everywhere. And so it was under, you know, want to know if you had the ability, I think you mentioned earlier where you can like understand where a customer is and then if that product's available for fast tagging or fast two day shipping there, then you have the tag show up. And if they're not, then you don't have the tag. Is that correct? Um, that's not what I got. Pretty much what okay. we do in our portal is we pretty much, we can turn it on for some SKUs and not all of them. That is correct. But pretty much what you can do in our seller portal is you can link all of the listings into one individual SKU or piece of inventory. So based on that, you can activate fast tags for some of these listings. Some, you don't have to activate them as all, but pretty much you can link them all in the portal. And then the tags are separate. That's a separate tab based on different from the integration. And then those you can kind of individually list based on the certain SKUs and the different listings you have online. Okay, perfect. I think that answers it, right, Ori? Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you. We just have like over a hundred different products and we would maybe look at saying, hey, here are our best sellers, They're like gifts that are more likely to be like, these can go really fast and we have them in eight warehouses or whatever. Yeah. Um, so- but the rest of the catalog is not. So we just want to find a clear way to message people saying, well, if you want to add a jar of this, then it's not going to ship out quickly. But if you just get this, it will ship it just to find a way to not confuse people. Yeah, definitely. So the packs pretty much only show up on the products that you want to show up in. So we can choose. And afterwards, I, you just shoot me a note or a text. I have that number and I can kind of show you your products. I can walk. I'd be happy to walk it through with you so it can pertain to your individual products. Okay. Well. Appreciate it. I got you. <laughs> yeah. So just to kind of add to that. Yeah. You can basically like the, the UI tagging is dynamic. So whatever inventory you have in the network that is actually available to a customer, that'll be tagged, but other things won't. So yeah. Um, cool. Just kind of moving along here, basically making fast delivery grow your traffic. So reducing your actual CAC, um, you know, all of us care about running more efficient ads and especially given kind of like iOS issues and just the state of advertising in general. Um, it's really important to think about the next potential for reducing your CAC being more efficient on your advertising. What we found through our testing is essentially adding dynamic delivery promises to your ads can help reduce CAC pretty significantly. So um, on Google, what we saw was a 21% increase in sales by adding this fast delivery badging. So you can see that on this side of the screen. So we automatically, we have an integration with, with Google shopping such that you can enable fast delivery badging on Google. And then we also have the same thing on Instagram and Facebook, where when you run ads, it'll automatically, based on the the customer's location relative to your inventory, serve them with a free two-day delivery messaging on the ad. And we saw this reduce CAC in some instances by 50%. So pretty significant results from just adding that promise to an ad. Because if you think about the the customer's mindset, especially when they're first kind of interacting with your brand through an ad, and let's say they're like a net new customer or even through retargeting, they're making a very quick decision here and you only have a split second of their attention. So a split second of their attention plus the the instant gratification or the quicker gratification that you can get from the product actually arriving at your doorstep kind of makes sense why the the psychology of the user helps reduce uh, or the buyer rather helps reduce CAC here. Um, And then we have a case study. I encourage you to check it out basically from Hey Dude Shoes, uh, uh, you know, big client of ours that sells uh, shoes across the U.S. and how they were able to reduce CAC from $15 to $11 by enabling certain items on two-day delivery. And essentially what we did was run a test and we did an A-B test. We put ads on, we put two-day delivery badging on, on a few of those uh, ads that were being served on others we didn't. We compared the results and this is what we found. So pretty compelling uh, and interesting stuff. And then finally, how do you like select the right fulfillment strategy? So out of all of those different those different kind of strategies that we talked about, how do you consider which ones to actually implement? So you need to think about what is the goal that you have when activating fast tags? What are the current margins that you have for each of your products? And how much incremental demand does fast tags, do fast tags actually bring for each of your products? So we talked about that example on Ani Energy where it didn't actually make sense for them to enable, to enable fast shipping for all of their products. In that situation, they, they understood that their goal wasn't actually, to, they understood their goal was to drive more profit, drive more AOV per product, but it didn't, the margins just didn't make sense. And, but what they did find is after they set that, that, that threshold for fast delivery, 
the incremental demand was actually higher because they had more products actually being added to each cart. So net net, they were they were better off. But these are the questions that you need to ask yourself. And then here, oh sorry, didn't mean to slip the slide. Um, you know, how do I pick the right products to enable on fast tags? And so we have a pretty cool tool that we can share the link uh, a link to you for. It's called the Profit Calculator. And you're seeing snap, uh, snaps of that here on the right-hand side. But essentially, it's a good way for you to kind of figure out how much incremental profit you can bring. So you can outline what channel that you're selling on, so your own website, what your 30-day sales are. Uh, then we calculate what the fast shipping boost is based on our customer's history. And you can define what the unit price is, what the wholesale cost is. And essentially, net-net, what it'll do is tell you what the profit bump that you can see. So in this specific example, out of 250 grand in sales, you're seeing a 42,000, you're seeing $42,000 and more profit. Um, sorry, I read that out incorrectly. Out of your $242,000 in profit that you might make without fast delivery, you can make $42,000 more profit if you enable fast delivery. So we'll, we'll share the link to this tool after the afterwards, but these are all calculations you can do yourself as well. Um, if, you, if you have the time and energy, essentially enable some of your SKUs on fast delivery, see how much it costs more to, to ship those products through fast delivery, see what your sales increase is going to be afterwards. It's a little bit of a tricky data science question, but you can, you can solve it if you, um, if you um, take some time to kind of answer that and then look at what the difference is between the additional cost and the additional profit that you get or the additional revenue that you get. And obviously we can help you out too. So shoot us a message and we'll, we'll happy to run these, these analytics for you. Um, so overall, this is how you kind of empower your, your business with, with fast fulfillment. Um, there's multiple ways to do it. We encourage you to check us out. We're one way to do it. Um, and yeah, we have some of these tools built out. I'll quickly just talk about, we talked about quickly, uh, our, our expansion of, um, one day delivery. So now we have 168 million. Uh, so right now we have 83 million who 83 million people who currently uh, have access to fast delivery through our network. We talked about how it was getting to 118 million, I believe, uh, now at the end of October, which is already passed. And then by April, our goal is to enable 168 million people across the U.S. to have access to fast delivery, one day delivery within the U.S. Um, we have a cool feature called like the merchant dashboard that's coming up that gives you more, more visibility on your business. So we talked about how do you like get the data points that you need for forecasting, understanding issues with your logistics. We're hoping to kind of automate that with our dashboard. So you can take a look at that when that's out. Uh, and then finally, we also do international shipping now. So deliver used to be only fulfillment in the US. Now we've filled to 220 countries. Uh, the rates are cheaper than USPS. So just a quick plug there. But I think the most important thing is if you have any questions for us, not necessarily about deliver, but just in general, like for your fulfillment, how do you prepare? How do you prepare for the holiday season? How do you prepare for 2022? Shoot us a message at advice at deliver.com. We promise to just provide you with the advice that we have and that we know. Uh, and then if you're interested in deliver specifically, reach out to Sandeep, here's his number and, uh, and uh, email. So really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much for, for, for paying attention. I, I really appreciate it. Awesome, Nabil, definitely appreciate that, and Sandeep as well. Um, I know there are a couple of questions that came into the chat that, Nabil, you answered that Michelle had, you know, asking, are there any minimums for emerging companies coming in? And you're saying that, no, there's nope. no nope. Uh, minimums or maximums at all for merchants, and you work with all sizes, that's and that's correct. great. Um, that's exactly and you also, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, that's yeah one thing I was just, yeah, I was going to say, like, no, no minimums, I, like, you can send us just a couple hundred SKUs. You can send us a couple dozen SKUs. Um, yeah, you can just test it out, to be honest. Like if you're, if you're wary about, you know, if you just want to see what the unit economics would be, I would say send us a few SKUs. We don't have any minimums. We don't have any contracts. And there's a flat fee per, per unit fulfilled. Um, so yeah, we our, our pricing is really simple. So you basically just have one fulfillment cost and you have one storage cost. Um, so every time you have an order that's fulfilled, we charge you one flat fee. So on Shopify for two day delivery, there's one flat fee that you can see. Um, we also have this tool called the cost calculator. So if you go on our website and you go to the cost calculator, you can actually input the ASN or the product dimensions and weight for whatever product that you're trying to fulfill. And you'll see what our pricing is across the board, uh, to fulfill that item. Awesome. Yeah. I saw you asked a question. Um, someone asked about like, are you able to create multi-packs or do you do any kidding in your warehouse? 
we don't, Sandy, you want to we, I just, I put it in the chat just to, so you can have it. So pretty much we don't right now technically create multi-plats, but we can, we have a prep team that we're working with right now that's working with the pick pack, like the end-to-end -end process that deals with these kinds of problems. So on a customized issue, if they want to bring it up, I'd be happy to talk about with that. But right now it's not like an official thing, but I can happily work with you on a personal level so we can work with our prep team on that. Awesome. And then are you guys doing any um, refrigerated or frozen shipping? That's do you want to take that on? Yeah, I just think that's another thing in process. Right now, the answer is official. It's the same thing as multi-packs. Officially, no, mm -hmm. but on a case-by-case -case basis, especially with a higher volume, like we are, we're definitely open to kind of experimenting with these solutions going forward. But right now, we're piloting these kinds of tests right now, but it's not like official. Awesome. Um, one thing that I wanted you to mention, since you guys do a lot of shipping, is any, some of the common mistakes that brands make when they're actually like shipping product out to customers. As an example, one thing I see is a lot of companies will actually use a poor box size. Like they'll use a box that's too big for the products and have a lot of room inside. It can damage the product and also their like shipping costs are more expensive because of that too. Any other kind of tips like that that you see brands kind of making that you help correct? Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, the packaging one's really important because that's something that at scale Deliver works on. So we have basically algorithms based on the type of product and the size of the product to get it in the right type of packaging that costs the least uh, for the end customer. So putting in the right mailer. Um, other other issues that I think like that 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 demand issue. So when you actually do the planning of where you want to host your your inventory, like not doing a quick scan of where most of your customers' orders are from and placing in the wrong area so that there's more um, miles travel, traveled per unit. I think another thing is like putting all your eggs in one basket. So, you know, some folks will just stick to FBA for, for, for their fulfillment and essentially not have like a backup solution. Uh, it's always kind of recommended to have some kind of backup solution, build redundancy into your, into your, uh, into your network. The other thing is um, basically optimizing inventory across channels. So sometimes what you'll see is that for merchants who sell on Amazon and sell on Shopify, they might have like different inventory pools that they're tapping into for each of them. And so it becomes really hard kind of um, consolidating those and, and, and building efficiency in your network. Um, you know, I think a lot, of, a lot of us have gone through issues around um, getting products into, your, into being available for sale from overseas. And so just planning logistics around that, there's not a lot we can do right now, but, you know, getting ahead of that and, uh, uh, you know, ordering more than what's needed so that it's available, things like that, that you can handle for uh, overseas fulfillment. We are, we are shipping right now to over 220 countries and territories. So international shipping just got launched here with us last month as well with that. So. Nice. I love that. Um, and then one thing that comes up a lot is around like sustainability in this process, right? Like we're all in this world now where like there's tons of shipping, there's tons of packaging. Um, how are you guys thinking about sustainability as part of your business? It's a really good question. And so in the next few months, you can actually ex uh, expect to see uh, specific pieces on our blog around this and like, how are we tackling that? But essentially our thesis, I, I guess like long story short is we need to do uh, you know, more research into the exact impact of this and quantify what I'm just about to talk about. But essentially, our thesis is the following. Where we can, we try to reduce the use of boxes, which is a lot of cardboard that goes into, um, that obviously is not, not as sustainable. The other thing is that when you reduce the number of miles that inventory is traveling <clears throat> um, to get to its end customer, that's obviously more efficient and, and, and more sustainable. So if you think about someone who has to do two-day shipping that only has locations in, say, the greater New York City area, if you have an order in Los Angeles and, and you need to get that order there in two days, the only way that you can do that is through airmail, um, which is obviously a much more carbon-intensive form of travel versus what you do and deliver is essentially, one, you're forwarding your inventory into our crosstalks, and what we do there is we have facilities that essentially do forwarding. So you send it to one location and then we split it across the country. When we do that splitting up process, we're consolidating your inventory with the inventory of other merchants in our network. So it's never that 
you are we're, we're sending um, one truck for like three SKUs or uh, like less than a truckload to, to send that out. What we try to do as much as possible is consolidate all the inventory. So anyways, that consolidation helps, I think is a more sustainable solution than, than air mailing. Awesome. So, can I just add one thing? It's like, we don't actually yeah. own our warehouses, but so we utilize like the space. So we try to lessen our carbon footprint by like optimizing the time and distance based on the technology. Cause we don't actually, we partner with the warehouses. So that's how it's kind of optimized. Okay, definitely good to know. Any other questions that people have in the last couple of minutes about uh, deliver or about just your own shipping questions that you're dealing with? You feel free to either uh, raise your hand and hop on video and ask that or ask any of those questions in the chat. And just a reminder, we have our advice mailbox. We're trying to more and more enable kind of just sharing our sharing like the expertise that we built in house. And so look out for, you know, feel free to hit that email up. And then um, we're also, uh, shortly considering launching like a like a Slack channel that you can just message us on and, and get feedback and advice. So we'll we'll keep you posted uh, afterwards. Are you guys looking into doing like um, not just like same day delivery, but even like one hour or two hour delivery? It's a great question, and it's definitely an aspiration of ours is to get like we just our thesis is essentially as e commerce matures, customers will want products quicker and quicker. Instant gratification is very important in this in in this industry. Um, so you know, as we grow as a company, that's definitely in consideration. Awesome, perfect. So I think with that, then um, any closing tips that you guys have on you know when as brands are kind of navigating the the next month. Um, in, oh, actually, we got a question here too. Um, Martin, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, I think. Our biggest uh, take is we're using 3PL currently who are doing our shipping for us and managing that program. I, obviously, we want to bring it in-house. Our biggest thing is moving it and changing it where we're managing the whole process and having another third party. It's a, it's a huge gap for us to make the decision when everything is running smoothly. And then all of a sudden, you want to take it to that next step. And, and now you've got to take – it's virtually you, you're putting – you know, you, you, we, we're not sure how much we're going to jeopardize our business by taking and moving in that road where we've got a PPL that are currently buying the product as a, on a wholesale basis uh, and they're doing a great job. But we know we could do a hell of a lot better job if we handled it in our certainly from a, from a control point of view. Right. It's tough. Like anytime that you work with a 3PL, there is like a, a level of <clears throat> kind of control that you're handing over to the 3PL. I would say that there's probably natural inflection points in your business or natural like decision points in your business that will allow you to kind of either shift in-house or look for another 3PL. So for example, like allowing your SKUs to naturally kind of <clears throat> exhaust themselves within the 3PL network as you build in-house capabilities. So you're replenishing less and less into the network and then gradually phasing into your own uh, warehouse network. Like that's one technique that I've seen implemented um, the other is like, it can be really difficult, but you can, you can try to enable them as you build your in-house capabilities to start, uh, outbounding from their network into yours and then slowly making that transition. But I agree with you. Like it, it is, it, it is a bit of a process to, to make that switch. No, we're shipping our own stuff from our own website to WooCommerce, but it's the, it's the Amazon part. That's the other, the, the exercise is taking that away. We were going to rely on somebody to manage that whole Amazon piece. And that's the that's that's the criteria because then we have to really get somebody because we don't want to be in the warehouse business ourselves. We'd rather have a three PL doing that. That's a whole new business altogether. Right. Is that I'm talking about a three PL. I'm talking about a three PL that 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 is not controlling our ASINs and controlling our business. That's actually a good question too, Namil. Do you guys do um, like key into Amazon to do fulfillment of Amazon orders? We do Amazon fulfillment, yes. So we have a direct integration with Amazon. <clears throat> so essentially, um, you know, once you get an Amazon order, we'll we'll fulfill it. Um, that's that's actually a really interesting point. Like, how do you how do you like make that transition? And so, you know, another way that you can think about doing it is uh, setting up your own warehouses or another three PL to do to do your Amazon fulfillment, and then letting your SKUs exhaust within that actual uh, within that three PL network that's currently doing your Amazon fulfillment. 
Um, right, and, and you can also do like order routing so that you can start setting up your own network and then <clears throat> essentially you can use that network for your website fulfillment. Uh, sorry, use that warehouse for your website fulfillment. And then if it has Amazon capabilities like Deliver does, then you can also send it out to Amazon from there as well. And then let your existing 3PL exhaust the, the SKUs that it has already. And to build on that point, actually with Amazon, we fulfill the FBM, fulfill bit merchant orders, FBMs. So we don't do the FBA prime like so that's separate from the FBM. So you'd have to create a different <laughs> listing with FBM. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks. Awesome. Appreciate it, guys. Any closing thoughts? I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, you know, we appreciate the chance to get in front of all of you. I think this was really insightful. I appreciate the questions that came in. So uh, happy to keep the conversation going. You can you can find me on LinkedIn. You can reach out to me. My email is just nabil at deliver.com. We also have our advice at, uh, mailbox. So yeah, always available to help. Yeah. And to build on that, it takes like literally two minutes to just sign up. So you can just import your inventory and like test out the portal and how it works. So it's all free to sign up very quick. So also have at it and give it a try if you have some time. Awesome. Definitely love it guys and appreciate it. And um, yeah, I, I really appreciate just that perspective on, on turning shipping into a revenue driver and some of the stats that you're seeing around that. Um, Sasha, I see your question. Um, they do not do frozen right now, but yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your Wednesday and we will uh, chat soon. As I mentioned, I'll send out a recording of the webinar as well. Thanks so much.